tech hub to attracting in this in this sector and then moving to the environment sector with recycling having via which is one of the biggest uh, uh, recycling plants in the whole middle east but also look looking at sustainability in a different sense and the last uh, one is tourism sector so four sectors that we went out from charger to attract investments in and then we move to the other part of Sharouf, which is basically developing projects and changing the way of of, of what uh, Sharjah is about. So Shuruq was, was mandated to develop different projects. Our focus was at the beginning to, to focus on uh, tourism. So we came up with the Chedi, for example, in Sharjah, and the Sharjah Collection Hotels, which is boutique uh, hospitality units managed by MISC all around, whether it's in the mountains or on a protected site. And, all, and then after that, moving towards creating joint ventures with the likes of Eagle Hills, with a huge real estate development called the Maryam Island, and, and Diamond Developer with creating the sustainable city in Sharjah, and then going into venturing uh, into media with ENG, creating Taswir, and then moving towards construction with a company from Turkey called Taja, and then all the way uh, getting Kareem to Sharjah uh, with, uh, with, Emir with Emirates Transportation. So Shuruq created an entity where we attract investment and we support investor and we go through JVs. Now with COVID, many things have changed. Uh, many things has disrupted the, 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 the many sectors. And one of the sectors that has been disrupted is tourism. Tourism has been a sector that maybe has been disrupted with Airbnb in a certain sense, but today, as we heard from Airbnb's uh, chairman saying, uh, the work of 12 years have collapsed in four weeks. So what, we, what this means is that we have to, to re-engineer how things are, and we, we have to recreate what, what, what was before a success, today maybe is a challenge. So within our portfolio in the tourism sector, we have created those boutiques, and I, I can show you a couple of images if you, if you allow me to share yes, my screen. Please. But what, what we have done uh, in, uh, in this sector, and maybe this, this way we can actually view, can I see, view full screen? Can you, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we may, we can, yeah. Okay, okay, and maybe it's this button, yes, okay. So I'll show you what we did in a in in, in, in couple of things and I can talk to you about Sharjah's economy and then I can show you what we have done in the tourism sector, if you may allow me. So Sharjah, is, as a sense, it is a very highly diversified uh, economy. There is not one sector that overtakes any sector. So a very well diversified uh, economy. A lot of focus was at the beginning in the 1970s is to focus on the industrial zone and creating the biggest industrial zone in the United Arab Emirates. Mostly focus on small and medium sized business. But then in the recent uh, years, we've created specialized free zones like the Sharjah, Hamriya, the Sharjah Airport free zone, the Hamriya free zone. And then we went into creating the first research and technology free zone in the whole Middle East. Then we created the healthcare free zone and we have now a media free zone. So it's moving away from industry and focusing on specialized free zone. And we talk about uh, how, how this had an impact. So if, when, when, when people think about the, the, the GCC, they think we are all oil based, but that's not the truth. Uh, Sharjah, yes, has oil, yes, it has gas, but only it contributes to less than 6% of its GDP. And then if we move on uh, with, with the presentation, and we talk about what Shirouk has been doing, as I said, the, today the focus uh, is, is on environment, with the focus is looking at attracting investors in this field, whether it's creating solar, uh, creating energy through solar, whether it's creating projects that will enhance charger. So what we did is the four sectors that I've mentioned, they, they have a great uh, return of investment, there is a great market share that we can gain into, whether it's tourism, healthcare, logistics, uh, now, what we have seen is with the research development with the Sharjah RTI Park, there is a huge move towards from an being an industrial, then educational, and now research and technology is something that uh, Sharjah is focusing on. So when we talk about uh, Shuruq's contribution, you know, our, our portfolio today almost reached $2 billion uh, within this 
different sectors that I have mentioned. And one of the biggest is basically our joint venture with Eagle Hills, uh, a well-established company, uh, real estate developer in, in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. But also we managed to get investors from abroad, like the, from the likes of uh, Mabani. Mabani to, to a lot of uh, investors around the, uh, around the region are, are known to be the owners of the avenues mall in Kuwait and Bahrain and very soon in Saudi Arabia and very soon here in Sharjah. So it's their first investment in this region. Uh, the, the director or the chairman of, of this, of Mabani is actually Mr. Mohammed Al Shayeh, the owner of Al Shayeh Group. So Diamond Developer, they did a very uh, nice project in Dubai called the, uh, the Sustainable City in Dubai. And so, a different different types of partnership that we have created. When we look at sustainability, we've created um, one of the first joint ventures regarding uh, infrastructure. And here we're talking about sewage treatment plants, taking taking something that used to be always through a government entity and going all the way to a foreign investor. And here going all the way to Belgium to get a company like B6 to partner with us and increasing the capacity from 30 million to 60 million cubic meter. Uh, and this is something that what we are so proud that we have created out of Qatra, a company called Naqa to purify the water, to clean the water, and then to use it as industrial water. And this is purely sustainable. So one of the, one of the uh, initiatives of Sharuq is to reduce carbon footprint. So for example, within the sludge drying beds that we've created in Qatra, we are actually contributing by by supporting uh, Sharjah cement factory. So instead of using coal, they're using the, 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 the produce from this. And then moving towards purifying the water with Qatra and taking the water to the level that you can use it rather than using expensive water that is desalinated from seawater. And I'm, I'm connecting it with one of the biggest safari parks uh, in the region that is going to be located in Sharjah. So, so this is something that we love talking about. Then we, then we talk about something that is beautiful to our eyes, something that we all love to do is going out, enjoying the desert, enjoying the scenery. What we did is taking some, in some cases, historical buildings uh, and transforming it into retreats. So for example, Al Faya retreat is one of, the, one of the beautiful retreats that sits in the middle of the desert, only 40 minutes from Sharjah or downtown Dubai, where we have transformed a building that used to be a fuel pump station built in the 1960s to a retreat in the middle of the desert. So five rooms with a sea salt spa, with a coffee shop, fully packed with COVID, without COVID, no issues. It's all about distancing today. So here a family can come, a group of friends can come, enjoy their time, and they would love that. So with COVID, we managed to succeed with this. And I think the more you have those boutique, unique, exclusive entities, you basically uh, can, can, uh, can flourish. Another nice thing is we talk about sustainability. We love our, our nature, we love our animals, we love our, 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 our uh, uh, scenic uh, view here. And you see here, this is in Kalba. Kalba sits on the Indian Ocean, it is, it's on the borders of Oman. It is al almost, uh, I would say 80 minutes drive from Sharjah, going through the desert and through the mountains and through the, the tunnels and you end up in this ecotourism site that we have created, which is basically has, it's the only site that has this biodiversity between mountains, between woodlands, between um, mangroves and all the way to the ocean. And here uh, with, with, with this area, we've created a retreat called the Kingfisher Retreat. The Kingfisher Retreat gives you this experience of being close to the nature, so you'll find turtles, Arabian gazelle, crabs, and all of those, all in one site. This place was, is, is flourishing since it started. With COVID, it even has, has boomed. We have only 20 tents. Some of them are, are tented camps, ten, uh, luxury tents, where you have a whole family with a plunge pool uh, in, in this beautiful setup. And this is another uh, resort that we've created. This time it's in the desert, sand dunes, 300 meters high sand dunes, only 40 minutes away also from Sharjah, where you have an oasis in the middle of the desert. Privacy with, some, with your own private pools, a beautiful setup. And at the end, this is the creme de la creme, the, the chedi, uh, which is basically taking houses that were built in the 1800s, restoring them, and making the most luxurious, 
boutique hotel in the entire region. Uh, old houses refurbished uh, extremely. So some of them are actually houses that for families that are that were that were that are living in Sharjah. Their grandparents' houses today. This is a, one of the one of the exclusive sites because of, it's in the tentative listing of UNESCO. And imagine sitting in 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 a, in a, in a house that used and houses because there are ten different houses with a nice restaurants and a coffee shop, and it gives you the era of the UAE before oil that was discovered. So with these projects, uh, COVID didn't really affect us dramatically because it co it all respects the guidelines that the government uh, have assigned us, which is keeping distancing, no sh rubbing shoulders, and, and within those destinations, we managed to do uh, a great uh, deal out of it. So this, is, um, this, is, this was my presentation. The last one, which we are so proud about, is we wanted to create the first home for everyone that wants to live in the UAE, but in a very sustainable way. So we, we created this joint venture with Diamond Developers, and we, create, we announced the Sharjah Sustainable City, which is located just next to Sharjah Airport, where it is a net zero energy community, houses, communities that, uh, that will actually have their own, gro uh, their, they will have a grocery next to them, they have a jogging track, a walking, a walking track, a cycling track, they, have, they will have their own vegetable produce in the, in the same area. Houses are going to be between three rooms all the way to five rooms uh, in this location and with prices starting from 6,000 dirhams as install monthly installments for up to 20 years, it depends on, on, but we're trying to give an opportunity for each one would that would like to live in the UAE and wouldn't want to, uh, wouldn't want to hassle with dealing with a consultant or a contractor. Here he has a house that is fully built and ready. So this is just in a, in a, in, in a just showing you what we are doing in, in Shuruq. And we have done many, many other projects. Uh, we have challenges that we're going through uh, but I'm I'm happy to to answer any inquiries or questions. So thank you thank you very much for sharing this information, which showed like the, the diverse uh, portfolio and the diverse activities that Shuru has had, and the different type of collaboration that it create with investors, whether alone or in partnership with you. Uh, the COVID nineteen has brought a lot of also change on the global business landscape. We're seeing tech being more at the forefront. You mentioned, uh, look into research. How is, is Shuru uh, looking at this transformation because it has been accelerated or, uh, and COVID-19 yes. has acted as a catalyst to this change, it seems. So what are your views on this new trends and how will Shuru and Sharja adapt to it? Sure, it's an excellent question. You know, in, uh, in January, we were in Davos this year discussing the fourth industrial revolution, the impact on it, and, and, and nobody was expecting that sort of acceleration. COVID came and it shocked us. It made us do everything on technology. It made governments move from, from, uh, from paper-based to, to tech-based. And, and I think that one of the advantages of COVID, it, it made us move so quickly and adapt to those changes if we want to survive. And I think if we want to survive, nobody wants to fail in, in a battle like this. And I think uh, governments uh, like uh, Sharjah has, has created a digitalization program where everything, the plan is to be digitalized. And, and that plan was accelerated because of COVID, uh, because if we don't do it, then we're going to lose a lot when it comes to, to digitalization. In Shuruq, we, we have created a partnership with a company called Injazat, a Mubadala-based company, where we're, we're transforming the way of how you deal with things. And, and one of those things is we're building the House of Wisdom, one of the projects that we're creating, that everything is digitalized. So you don't have to interact with anything. Everything is going to be either synchronized, you will, we will know who you are, what do you like, what do you dislike, where are you going to park, what do you like to eat, and, and it's moving data to the next level. And this is, this is something that, that we always uh, used to talk about. And, and I've been in a course with Singularity and we're, we've, been, we've been at Singularity University and they were talking about how is the world moving regarding, uh, regarding digitalization. And today with COVID, whether we like it or we don't, this is happening now. And I, I, I believe within Shuruq, it, it was before it was a part of our plan to do it. Now it is, and now it is not a plan to do it. Now it's an action. To do to, to see how, how this impact and 
And what I've seen also, new industries came out. We talk about digitalization, but we also talk about cybersecurity. We also talk about what are the new industries that came up. So the funny thing is that uh, in, in the past, if we talk about um, agriculture and farming, you would think about it as it's a big no-no for the region where water is scarcity and weather is, 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 is quite tough. We looked at this sector in a different way with COVID. Uh, today, Shurukh is venturing out with a company called Vegetech. We in Sharjah have seen this uh, great change between importing vegetables to producing vegetables. And maybe before it was not economically uh, sensible, today we see it very much economically sensible. If solar is cheap for us, if water is available by RO, uh, if land is available, if weather can be, con uh, con uh, can be controlled using uh, those um, greenhouses, then everything is possible. And what I've seen is mushroom has been grown in Sharjah. Uh, 30 years ago, I remember going with my uncle to a, an area called al Dade, which is, used to be an agriculture part, of Sharjah, where we see strawberry are grown. Today we see mushrooms are grown in Sharjah. And I've, I'm here and, and I've seen an article about rice have been growing in Sharjah. And coffee beans, are, uh, coffee is, is, uh, is actually going to be grown in Sharjah. So with a government that says nothing is impossible, we have to create within the government uh, the mechanism that makes it easier for an, any foreign investor to come and, and invest. With technology, everything is possible. Uh, with the use of, of the speed of internet that we have within the UAE, it's much, it makes it much easier. And also with the, with the ecosystem, having a great educational hub with the American University of Sharjah and Sharjah University and the other university within the UAE, I think we have a lot of good brains that can come up with uh, great innovation for the future of the Emirates. I mean, food security and the supply chain has become a, a hot topic because the dependency on one zone has shown that it might be flawed and many countries are now trying to, to work around this. While you, are, uh, you were facing this, these challenges, uh, how has been the uh, investor sentiment? You talk to a lot of investors continuously. Uh, usually you travel a lot to be able to connect and discuss. Has it changed from one geography to another, do you feel, or and from one sector to another, in terms of wanting to come, open shop, or invest? And in which sectors are you feeling it today? Uh, uh, excellent, another excellent question. You know, we have, we have created a Sharjah Investor Center called Saeed here in, in Al Qasba, where, where, where Shuruq uh, headquarters is. This center, the idea was it to create everything within a one-stop shop. And, and I will tell you, we didn't, when we opened it at the beginning of January, it was not really busy. Uh, but because we are the only center that creates a one-stop shop for any investor, the numbers have shot so high that we got the best return for us in March, April, and May due to due government entities not being functional. This center was functioning because of the digitalization that it has reached. Do we, is there an appetite for foreign investors to come to invest? Yes, but in two different sectors. And we've seen in infrastructure, there is still a huge demand. In technology, there is a huge demand. In hospitality, not with the 300 rooms hotels, not with the 200. Yes, for the boutiques that are 20 rooms, 30 rooms, 35 rooms, all the way to 65 rooms, but not bigger than that. Because of what is happening, because of even you know, with the UAE being developing itself as a tourism destination, we have, I believe, more than 100 and, 150,000 rooms in, in within the United Arab Emirates. 11,000 are actually in Sharjah, 13,000 within the coming two years. But this has made investors think twice. Do we really need to build another big hot, uh, hotel? Do we, need, do we need to create different uh, destinations that will, that will be different? that will get us a better return of investment? Yes, that's the way of how it is. Is there, an, is there an appetite to invest in healthcare? Definitely, never never before that we've, 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 we've got applications for hospitals to come and either mostly to retrofit some buildings to become, to be ready and some that are specialized because when we talk about healthcare, we speak about an industry that is still needs a lot of investments uh, from the private sector. The government today, is trying to pull out and to, reg uh, and to regulate those industries. They don't want to keep on investing. The government would like to create the atmosphere, the environment for, a, for an investor to come and invest. And I believe healthcare is still a booming sector. 
uh, it is a heavy in, uh, uh, sector because the investment in it is very high. The last sector is environment. And I think with solar being cheaper day by day, with people being more cautious, being more, uh, being more uh, focused on creating a less carbon footprint, being more sustainable, recycling is hitting, solar is, is, is hitting the records. We, fe we feel that there are more um, interest between in large companies that would like that are backed up by by large banks also to come and invest. And the good thing about the UAE, we have an excellent legal system that makes it easy for an investor to come and invest. We have governments that are very stable, stable governments. We have leadership that are uh, that are very clear in their vision. So there is no fear from an investor. It's just reassessing where to invest and how much to invest and who is the partner that's going to invest. And we've seen that with ADNOC having a world record, I believe, investment for the region with more than $20 billion in a time that nobody would think about an investment from a pension fund, for example, in the Nordic Sea. And this, is, this shows how the UAE have created uh, an opportunity for investors to come and invest in it. Uh, another point that I wanted to, to discuss with you is, I mean, you, you're a big supporter of uh, entrepreneurship and SMEs. And so Sharjah presents for, for any uh, tech entrepreneur uh, a good ground to come at a cheaper cost or, or at a good cost compared to the entire region to open up. So what are the uh, initiatives that you, you plan and how do you support SMEs in general? And now in light of uh, COVID-19, what do you plan to do to attract more and in which sectors you mentioned a few like agri-tech and and also technology and having universities there but sure. is there something that you might formalize in order to do it yeah see the the dna of sharjah is the startups is the small is the medium size and if you go back to the 70s when his highness uh, dr sheikh sultan became the ruler of sharjah his focus was all give opportunities support try to be affordable as possible so that we, 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 we create an economy from within. We don't need to import, we create and we export. And this is what makes Sharjah today uh, an exceptional case. Uh, what we did in the, in the last decade is we created different entities like Ruwad and Sharjah, like Shira and Sharjah. Ruwad, for example, is an entity that supports startups into different sectors and guide them. Shira is a different scenario. Shira is an entity that falls under Shiro. The idea of Shira is basically to incubate, to initiate, to support, to guide, and to link those startups or those ideas with potential investors. We create more like a Shark Tank concept for them. We make them, we make them, we challenge them about what will, how, why will you be successful, and what would make you successful, and we guide them and we link them with investors. And and what we've seen is we've we've seen great ideas in the in the last uh, three years that. We created even uh, Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival, where we attracted uh, international speakers to to create this sort of of, of, of energy for for people to to come up with great ideas. And with the Sharjah RTI Park, we found that there is 3D printing a 3D printed building. We found that that into the agriculture, a company came with hydroponics. Then we, we then we look at uh, metal uh, printing uh, concept. Then we looked at mobility with a company that has this skyway concept that uh, moves places uh, per people from one place to another place. And the list goes on of how much technology and how much innovation is coming out from students that are living here. And I'm not talking about Emirati only students. We're talking about everyone that calls UAE home is welcome to come up with innovation. And the nice thing is also, we within the UAE government uh, have the support uh, from the prime minister to say that if you have a great innovation, we're going to support you with visa, we're going to support you with, with everything that will make you flourish. We, we want to, to create a, an environment that makes everyone feel that yes, it's not only Silicon Valley that you can, you can flourish, it's also UAE, you can, and we see uh, Amazon uh, buying Sukh from, from us, we're, we're seeing Uber buying Kareem from, from a company that was created from the region, from the mines of the region, and there are more and more companies. Uh, so the, the, the future is open. I think the future is, is, is more promising today, post-COVID, 
than before. There is more trust uh, from people that this is the place that we that we feel safe in. We like the government. We like what the government has done. We like how we were, we were supported. And here, uh, and with more support from the government, like for example, in Shuruq, we started a concept called support local businesses. So for example, if I'm a hotel and I would like to buy uh, coffee beans, I will not buy it and import it from, from abroad. I'm going to deal with a, with, a, with, a, with a cafe or a coffee a roastery that is in Sharjah, that is supported by uh, locals uh, that have started their roastery to buy the roastery, uh, to buy the beans. And, and this is only one part of how can we support the local businesses to, to, to at least sustain and then thrive in the future. If they do good coffee and it's a good roastery, I'm also a buyer, so I'm, I'm there. So coffee is, a, uh, I'm all about it. I just to, I mean, if anybody wants to ask question, we have the Q and A uh, section. They can type their question, raise their hand, and uh, and we'll, we'll, we 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 can answer it. Uh, you, you, I mean, you you always like challenges. You always like pushing yourself. Was this one of the biggest challenge you faced uh, in your in your career? You mean COVID or you mean... Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well see, uh, we were hit uh, before that by the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. But the financial crisis was not as... It didn't make our, our economy halted, you know? And with the COVID, it made everything stops. And, and, and it's, it's the whole life, the whole family, the whole business, the whole government. Traveling was stopped. Uh, business was was so slow for for a lot of industries thriving in other economies. Yes, for me it was it was a uh, it was a tough time, uh, but it came with a lot of advantages. It came made us think about different things. It made us also accelerate things that we hadn't planned. Uh, so I thought it was it was a it, it was a, a good wake up call. Uh, it made us think about environment in a different way. It made us go back to our families uh, in a different way. It made us discover things about ourselves that we never knew. Uh, and it made us be thankful that we are in a place that our governments stood very, uh, very strong against what's happening and said, yes, we will not take the risk. We're going to take all precautions. We'll take things steadily. And I think we were, we, we were so lucky with the leadership uh, of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa uh, that the UAE has created this assurance that don't worry, things are going to go back. There was a support to the federal, to the to the central bank with 120 billion. Uh, there is there was an ease of of of, of uh, to to reduce the shock. Uh, but now we're saying we're back. We have to go back. We have to start on moving ahead. We don't. We have to uh, not fear, but we have to to be responsible. Uh, and this is something that uh, we need to keep in mind. We cannot go and party. We have to be responsible more than ever. Uh, and uh, and I, I believe the future is promising in, the, in those many different industries that we've mentioned today. Uh, I, to, to conclude with, with one, uh, one, final, uh, uh, one final question is, uh, if, you, if you focus on uh, one sector, let's say, where you see that exactly this COVID-19 has uh, brought a new opportunity for Sharjah and that I mean, you have a diverse portfolio, but what you personally is the sector where you believe the most in and the one that you want to see uh, within five years, 10 years, have a blossoming ecosystem in Sharjah, which one would it be? I would say the food sector. Food sector for me was, uh, was magical. You know, I posted something on LinkedIn about a company called Timar Al Imarat. I got 200,000 200, views. The interest for, uh, for, for people in this food, because food is everyone. It's me, it's you, it's your wife, it's our kids. It's everyone. It's restaurants, it's hotels, it's, it's everything. So if we can, and we, I remember in the time when we, we, we were with Singularity and they were t talking about uh, from farm to table. And we were th thinking about it, you know, it's coming up, you know, it's going to come. But if we can now say, we do have it actually in Sharjah from a company called Timar Limarat or Gracia or Vegetech, where they can get you hand-picked food with no pesticides on your table within six hours. Isn't it a dream? Yes, it's a dream. How, how much do we, how many, far, uh, how, many, how many companies we need to create 
in order to say we are zero uh, importing vegetables or or uh, or uh, or fruits from abroad. Uh, if if we had if we have if we if we put a strong program and what I have seen. Uh, from His Highness uh, Sheikh uh, Mohammed bin Rashid, the Prime Minister, ruler of Dubai, saying that, you know what, we are going to support you by subsidizing water. This is just, um, the, 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 this is just what you need. You need land, you need water, you need energy. And if you have all of this with technology, everything is possible. And I think this industry will thrive if we create a regulation that by 2025, we are no longer going to import any vegetables and we are going to be self-sustainable by this, I think this will transform how, how countries will look at the UAE and we will start exporting rather than importing. Uh, I, I believe that with deep tech and with all the advantages that you've mentioned that are available now in the UAE, this, I mean, this is something that will be hopefully 